Uh, one of the big turning points in the game for Stewie, you, you're down 10 in the second quarter and then you go on that 7-0 run. How good is this team at sensing, I guess, pivotal moments in the game, even if they're not in the fourth quarter? Because all series, you responded uh, facing some deficits early on. Well, I think we just have a good awareness of, you know, what we can do and understanding that we're playing against a great team and they're going to make runs. And when we were down 10, it was really early. You know, all we needed to do is, is chip away um, and then just continue to be aggressive. No matter what, throughout this entire game, if we if we were the ones that stayed together best and strongest, um, we were going to win like we did. And we continue to do that and trust on our teammates and know that um, everyone has our back in, in whatever we're doing. For Sandy and JJ right in the middle, uh, JJ, you had that big block right at the end of the second. You guys go in with a one-point lead, and then you score seven straight out of it. Sandy, you've talked about mindset all week. How big was it to have that play going into halftime? Yeah, massive. It's like momentum changes. Uh, yeah, we got down. We had timeout. We came out. We responded in the right way. Uh, you know, our word for today, I think if you're here in, at the start of the game, I said it's relentlessly persistent because that's what game balls require. And, you know, this is a team really proud, you know, when you bring all these amazing players together, we work a lot on our culture. And I think you could see we're connected because when you have connection, you have commitment. And these girls are committed to each other and, and, and this program and how we want to play. So it was, you know, great to watch. Hi, everybody. I'm JJ. In the fourth quarter, when Connecticut went on that run to get the lead, what do you think sort of helped you guys sort of regain your balance to sort of finish out the game really strong and come up? with the one in a really hostile environment. Just like Sandy said, persistence, you know, we, I don't think any of us felt like we were going to lose the game or that it was out of reach, obviously. Um, so just sticking together, weathering the storm and um, understanding that we have a lot of weapons and different ways that we can score the ball and, and also lock in defensively. Hi, congratulations, everybody. John Quell, back in the first round, you knocked down those two clutch free throws at the end of that second game to send the game to overtime. And then today, five of six down the stretch to really give you guys some separation there. That's another level of pressure, especially on the road. So how do you stay locked in in those those kind of high intensity moments late in games? Yeah, I just, like I said before, I just do my free throw routine um, and go up there and shoot with confidence. And I know that my teammates have my back, so I'm just, I'm confident when I'm up there. Uh, either for Stewie or JJ, you know, now that you guys have you you guys have come into Brooklyn this first year and you're leading this team to something that somewhere it hasn't been in 21 years, what's it like for either one of you? Um, to be honest, uh, I don't think I've fully processed uh, what it feels like to, to bring this team to a WNBA Finals. I think, let me say that again, I've processed it in the fact that we're going to the Finals because we're going after a championship, but the fact that the Liberty haven't been to a Finals since 2002 um, is, is wild. And to be able to have that and know that we have the entire city behind us is something that is really, really special. Um, happy that we get back tonight. Know that we start on the road, but uh, we still have home games left in Brooklyn. Sandy, you, you talked about pregame how you're a very process-driven coach. You didn't really let yourself think about kind of what could happen and all that. But when that final shot bounced off and you guys won, what was going through your mind? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, we made some mistakes down the end, but that's, um, you know, this is what these games are about, isn't it? It's just staying connected, and, and we made a few errors. Uh, they made some big shots. Um, you can never get comfortable. But and it was relief, but joy. You know, this has been the most fun I've had coaching these uh, players, and just that we're all invested in it together, and, and it's, it's just exciting and proud of them. We get another opportunity to go to the final. Some of us multiple, some of us for the first time. But this organization hasn't been for such a long time, and that's really, really special. So I'm proud of that as well. Stewie and Sandy. Stewie, you said you embraced the whole super team narrative. Now um, the matchup that everybody had been looking forward to is going to happen. Uh, what does that mean for you? What does it mean for the WNBA in terms of eyes on the game? And what does it mean for women's basketball? Um, I mean, I think that it means more for you guys because you guys have been talking about it since the start of the season. So. <laughs> Um, the fact that we just continue to work hard, we continue to understand what it is to represent the Liberty and how we can be great together and know that, you know, Vegas has obviously had an incredible season and we played them tough many times and um, it's going to be a great series. And, you know, I think right now we're going to enjoy this moment of getting to the finals and then, 
you know, when we get back together, we, we talk about logistics and, and what we're going to do in our game plan, but uh, confident in, in who we are and, and what got us to this point and continue to just have, have one another's backs and be our best. Um, for oh, sorry. Um, so like the super team. Oh, it's, no, like no, that. I think it's good. I think that's what the narrative everyone wanted at the start. Uh, I didn't particularly like the super team thing, but you know, these players, you know, we still played great, you know, because it, it was a process for us to get to this level now. And I think it's going to be a great series. And I think, um, and it's a promotion for the WNBA, isn't it? It's, it's New York. We haven't done it for so long, but we're playing the champions from last year. And I think it's going to be a really competitive se series and, and hopefully more and more people turn their eyes into the game and we can continue to grow it. Uh, for JJ and Stewie, what have been your emotions, I guess, over the last 20 minutes? JJ coming at this, returning to the finals with the new team this time uh, after last year, Stewie getting back to the finals for the first time since 2020. Can you just take us through what it's been like so far? Yeah, like Stewie said, I feel like I haven't really had a chance to like really lose up, but obviously just extremely happy that we're able to say that we, you know, we did this with the New York Liberty and obviously still so much more to go and happy to say that we're still playing, but, um, Definitely feels different to be on, on, on a different team, but happy that that is with this team. We'll go over to Zoom. Let's do it, sorry. <laughs> I remember this question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's too tired. I think it's, um, you know, excited, obviously, but not only for myself, but for the ones that haven't been to a finals to to experience this. And, you know, we, talk, we talked as players before the playoffs started about, this is like a roller coaster, like, if your mental isn't in a great place during the playoffs, it's going to be really difficult for you. And that's why we talk about staying together and all of this. But um, these things aren't easy. And getting to the finals is not an easy thing. Um, so I just want everyone to really enjoy it and embrace it and understand that this is this is the biggest moment of our entire season now. And we want to make sure that this is when we're at our best. Now we'll go over to Zoom. Michael? Yeah, congratulations to everybody. Um, Coach Prondello, it, the fact that you guys did play Vegas, what, four times in August, so it's, it's still pretty recent in everybody's memory. Is that helpful in terms of um, the, what the matchup's going to be like? You talked a lot about how there was so many adjustments uh, during those matchups, and, and having you know done that fairly recently, how does that help in terms of preparation for what's coming up? Yeah, no, I think it does help. I think that helped us. Uh, you know, a lot just playing him it was back to back, obviously, at that one stage and then early in August and late in August and just to try different things out and saw what worked and what didn't work. But, you know, the chess match begins now. I mean, it's a whole new series. This is a, the the finals. This is a championship. So, um, yeah, no, I'm excited. I know Becky will be excited. I know all the players um, that will be competing will be excited. But just really, uh, it's going to be a hard fought battle. Uh, but we're battle tested. So looking forward to that. <laughs> if I could follow up real quick, you mentioned um, Coach Hammond. Uh, you and Coach Hammond are both former WNBA players, so we're going to have a matchup of former players. And it strikes me that's sort of a mark of growth in the league to have former players both be head coaches of the, for teams in the finals. So I wonder if you could just sort of reflect on that. Yeah, look, I think it's great. You know, um, I think uh, former players getting the opportunities to be head coaches in this league that we were a part of. I think that's really special. We've both created our own journey here. I've actually coached uh, Becky when she played, so I got a little bit of age on her. Um, but she's an amazing coach. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, that's, I suppose this is a direction. We have eight female coaches this year, and it's nothing against the men, but I just like that we, uh, women are getting opportunities, former players. Thank you. Ben? Yeah. Um JJ, just what do you remember, you know, a year ago at this time, you were the last player to walk off the court um, of the finals with the Sun. I guess, what do you remember about that moment then? And is it crazy to think about all that's kind of happened now and, and walking off the court to a different tune? Um, I mean, obviously a lot of emotions last year, um, making it to the championship again and falling short. And, uh, yeah, I just remember a lot of emotions, obviously, um, disappointment and all of that. And um, I think it's a blessing and the beauty of sports to be able to, you know, be with, with this team and be able to be going into our finals and having an the opportunity again. And so um, just going in with the mindset to leave it all on the court and, and finally get one.
And then, Sandy, just for you real quick, I mean, does anything that Benajah, like, do surprise you at this point, or have you just come to expect it? What, what can you say about her? No, no, nothing surprises me. Well, bees built like this. I mean, I know it's a little bit of a process early in the season. We're trying to work it out, how it all combined. But I think we took off when, you know, we found B get more integrated into the offense because he's an amazing scorer. We just didn't want to just be the defensive player, but we worked it out. And then obviously it was JJ after the all-star break. So once we started clicking, it was fun to watch. But B is the ultimate professional. I've loved her growth and her commitment to this team, but to continue to get better individually with the work that she puts in day out. Um, but yeah, super proud of her. Uh, we've been, you know, she was injured last year, but it's great to see her back. It's just better than ever. And I think that this, you know, her potential, she's going to keep getting better. We'll finish with Sasha. Hey everyone, JJ, um, how does it feel for you? Um, as a Bahamian, probably the most prominent Bahamian female basketball player that we have right now, um, the country is behind you. How does that feel heading into the finals now, having beat your former team? You know, it feels amazing, obviously, and um, to, to have my Bahamian people behind me, and, you know, they always have my back. So, yeah, just always representing the Bahamas, always always feeling proud of what I've been able to accomplish and, and the people that have supported me along the way. So. Um, trying to go out there and get one for the 2.2.